Now it's time for the Rick Unger Show. Welcome back to the Rick Unger Show. As you are no doubt aware, shortly after the conclusion of our program, uh, I think nine o'clock Eastern time, we will be seeing the second and final presidential debate. Just to set it up for you, you probably know the moderator is going to be NBC's Kristen Welker. It will be divided up into six segments of approximately 15 minutes each. The topics have been chosen. We're looking at fighting COVID-19, American families, race in America, climate change, national security, and leadership. And finally, as you've no doubt also heard, each candidate is going to have two minutes at the start of each one of these uh, segments to speak without being interrupted as their opponent's microphone will be turned off. Well, here to give us a preview as to what we can expect this evening is our friend Bernard Whitman, Democratic strategist, former Bill Clinton and Michael Bloomberg pollster, and the founder and CEO of Whitman in Insight Strategies. Bernard, welcome back. Good evening, Rick. Thanks so much for having me. Well, here we are, another debate. Uh, Let me start out with this. You know, in the first presidential debate, uh, the general feeling was is that Joe Biden was coming into it in something of an advantageous position. The bar had been set so low for him through all of these months of uh, of Trump and his campaign telling us how mentally incapacitated Joe Biden was that really all he needed to do in the minds of many was put together coherent sentences and he would win the debate. Well, he did that. Now, my question is this, though. We all saw how the president behaved in the first debate. Is the president now coming into this debate with that same sort of advantage where all he needs to do is stay calm and reasonably coherent and maybe he's the winner? You know, I don't think so. I I think conventional wisdom might suggest yes, but I mean, the stakes are very, very different. We have a pandemic which is exploding again. We had 62,000 cases yesterday, which is sort of, I think, the highest we've had since August. Hospitalization rates are up. Test positivity is on its way up. The economy is still uh, really, really hurting. We had almost 800,000 new jobless claims released just this morning. I think people expect more from the president than just is he able to sort of stand there and not interrupt Joe Biden. I think people expect more from the president than just more of his lies, more of his baseless attacks, more of his um, uh, just self-serving um, uh, fabrications. And I think, you know, can the president do better than he did last time? Lord hope, for the sake of democracy, I hope so. Uh, but I think that he's got a tall, tall mountain to climb. Well, as you look at the topics that were picked, and I believe the topics are picked by the moderator, it does strike me that there's very little chance that the president is going to have any interest on in staying on these topics. I don't see Hunter Biden's name in the topics. I, I don't see all the things that Donald Trump concerns himself with. What I do see is a lot of stuff he doesn't want to talk about. He's not going to want to talk about COVID-19, although I doubt he'll be able to uh, avoid it. He's not really going to want to talk about race in America. He certainly isn't going to want to talk about climate change. Uh, how's this going to go down? He's not. He's going to avoid most of these topics that have been chosen. Well, look, he's avoided most of these topics since he be- he took the presidency. I mean, this is why we're in the mess that we are in, because he chose to believe his own lies. He chose to sort of ignore the facts. He chose to ignore science. He chose to do the single greatest thing that could have helped us. He chose instead to not wear a mask, to ridicule people for wearing masks. I mean, the truth is this debate format could serve as an incredible gift to Donald Trump. How? Because if he comes out of the gate and squarely addresses the first topic head on, the coronavirus pandemic, and talks about exactly what he's done, what his vision is, uh, adopting the role of science, endorsing wearing a mask, not sort of you know, equivocating like he did uh, at the dueling uh, town halls last week, then he actually has a chance to get people to go, you know what, maybe, maybe he can take us out of this. Maybe he can rebuild the economy. Maybe he can get us on track. But the truth is he's not going to. He is going to attract Biden and Harris as, as part of the socialist agenda it's going to allow millions of people into the suburbs wreaking havoc, which is not true, which is fabrication, which is just false. He's going to attack Dr. Fauci, who, by the way, he, Dr. Fauci has a 62 percent favorability in our latest poll nationally. That is 20 points above Donald Trump. Fauci is above water, like by plus 38 in favorables. Donald Trump's underwater by about 15 points. So Donald Trump cannot help himself. He prevaricates. He lies. He ridicules. He makes fun. All while people are hurting. 
People need reassurance. People need security. People need economic relief. I mean, this guy can't even get a coronavirus relief bill past his own Republican Senate. Well, How is he going to unite the country? So, Bernard, and by the way, if you're just joining this uh, conversation, we are talking with Bernard Whitman. We are previewing tonight's uh, second and final presidential debate. Bernard, it's interesting. The things that you just mentioned, you talk about the suburbs and the things that Donald Trump is going to want to say there. You talk about all these things you're mentioning. We know the American public is out of step with Donald Trump. We see the polls. We know that he is not doing well in the suburbs. We knew all along that he wasn't doing well with uh, suburban women. And now we're seeing strong indications he's not doing very well with suburban men. His campaign, if he were to do what you're suggesting he will do, his campaign is going to be having heart attacks. Do you think that there is a chance that his campaign is winning the battle this time with him and that they will be able to get him to stick to to policy discussions that might have a chance of ringing more popular with the American that's watching this? I think on the, on the margins incrementally, yes. Uh, overall, absolutely not. He has proved himself time and time again, incapable of really addressing the concerns of everyday Americans. I mean, look, Rick, he is campaigning this time exactly how he's been governing, which is governing to his base, appeasing his base, you know, uh, 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 sort of signaling to white supremacists that it's okay to sort of rise up and take arms, sort of, you know, fomenting conspiracy theories about Hunter Biden that nobody except the far right of his base really cares about. He is playing to his base. He's not wanted to or indicated that he has any ability, intention, or desire to expand the electoral map beyond the narrow coalition that brought him into victory with a minority of the popular vote. I don't think he's going to do this time. And the truth is, you know, we talk about how the election's two weeks away, Rick. It's not two weeks away. A third of Americans have already voted. One third of Americans who voted in 2016 have already voted this time. And we don't have, you know, full party registration. It's, we have registration for about half the states that are voting, if you will. And uh, if when you look at those, half the people who have voted in those states are Democrats. The other half split between Republicans and independents. So the early voting is looking very, very good. But I have to say for any Democrat, any anti-Trumper, any uh, uh, sort of uh, fair minded, independent or Republican out there, please, please, please vote. This election is far from over. We need every single vote. Don't let up act as if we're 10 points behind, even though we're a dozen points ahead. All right. So the point that you just made, and correctly so, leads to an obvious question. And that is, does this debate really even matter? Are there is there anybody out there at this point who is likely to have their mind changed in either direction as a result of what happens in tonight's debate? Well, look, uh, if history is a lesson, all we would need is 39,000 people in three states to change their mind. Trump won by 77,000 votes across three states last year, uh, last cycle. So the, the truth is, is it going to change anybody's mind? I think it may encourage people to vote. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, it encourages those people who uh, voted for Obama a couple times, that voted for Trump last time, to actually vote for Joe Biden, to have people considering that have not voted previously to actually go out and vote. I think it is going to uh, reaffirm what we've been seeing in the polls for months and months and months. I mean, the amazing thing, Rick, about this is this election in the face of the most uh, uh, incredible pandemic we've seen in in, in 100 years, the biggest economic downturn in nearly 100 years, uh, so much volatility, so many changes, so many, you never know what's happening. This race has been consistently steady in terms of Biden being ahead nationally in the key swing states for months. I suspect this is going to continue. But, um, you know, all we need to do is is sway a few people here and there on the margins and things could change. All right. Well, that looks like a good place to take a break. We're going to do that when we continue, though, a lot more to talk about in terms of this evening's debate that'll be coming up shortly. We are discussing it and analyzing it with our friend Bernard Whitman, Democratic strategist and uh, founder and CEO of Whitman Insight Strategies. We will continue with Bernard when we continue with The Rick Unger Show right 
after this. Welcome back to the Rick Unger Show. If you are just joining us, we have been discussing what we might anticipate from tonight's presidential debate, the second and final debate between, of course, the president, Donald Trump, and challenger, Joe Biden. We are having that conversation with Bernard Whitman, Democratic strategist. Bernard, I'm going to ask you to do something. I'm going to put you on the spot here. I'm going to ask you to pretend that you are the campaign manager first for Joe Biden. What do you want to see Joe Biden do tonight? Joe Biden needs to continue to do what he's done for the last number of months, and that is project himself as a clear, calm, composed leader who's ready to take on the pandemic, who's ready to restore economic uh, um, sanity, if you will, and bring the country together while at the same time ensuring protections for health care and battling climate change. This is what he has to do. He has to uh, really be on guard not to take debate. Trump is going to try to get him to take debate on Hunter Biden, try to take debate on all sorts of things that make no sense. If Biden just sort of is able to, if you will, laugh it off and, and go back and just hammer him on the coronavirus, hammer him on the lack of recovery, hammer him on taking away uh, protections for pre-existing conditions, which, by the way, that's exactly what he's trying to do with the elevation of Amy Coney Barrett. There's no question about that. He needs to stick to the facts, not get overly emotional, and speak squarely to the American people, and we will win. Well, there are, I the way I see it, there are two places, two uh, topics where Trump is going to try and get Joe Biden to take debate. Uh, you certainly mentioned one of them. You know that Trump is going to find a way to come after him on this Rudy Giuliani, Hunter Biden story, which has led to both the president and Giuliani calling the... Um, <laughs> Uh, it makes me laugh. I'm sorry. Calling the Biden family a criminal enterprise. I mean, again, projection on the part of this president. Uh, he's going to get him to try and take the bait there. He's also going to, I think, try and get him to take the bait on the Supreme Court packing issue. What do you tell Joe Biden uh, to respond? How does he respond to the first on the Hunter story? Well, look, I mean, I, I think we have to remind the American people. Biden has to remind the American people what they believe. We did a poll. Uh, about a week ago. And we found out that the words that are most associated with Donald Trump when we ask people, Republicans, Democrats, independents, what do you think of Donald Trump? Liar, dishonest. Joe Biden is seen as honest and a truth teller. So I think we have to remind the American people, Joe Biden has to remind the American people, this guy doesn't tell the truth. He's not been telling the truth about his taxes. We're finding out he's either a tax cheat or a terrible businessman. And now we find out that he has secret bank accounts in China. So let's discuss the secret bank accounts that he has in China. I mean, what's what's going on with that? So I think we have to underscore the fact that this man cannot be trusted. This is something the American people already believe. And and I think that, um, you know, with respect to uh, Hunter Biden, people, even Republicans, really just don't care. That's interesting. I suspect you're right. Uh, It'll be interesting to see how that turns out. What about the court packing? Biden did tell us that he would let us know his position on that before the election. Does that happen tonight? Yeah, well, I think, look, I mean, in the most recent news that just came out, Biden did what I think is entirely appropriate. And he said, you know what? Here's what I'm going to do. The court system has gotten out of whack, to use his language. It's gone out of whack. So he's going to appoint a bipartisan commission of politicians, of leaders, of jurors, of scholars, uh, and and give them 180 days after he assumes the presidency to come back and give a report about what should be done. I think that is a calm approach. I think that's a reasonable approach. I think it's a rational approach. Some people, his critics are going to say he's punting. He's not saying whether he packed the court or not. I think it's quite reasonable, and I think he just has to stick to that as his answer. All right, interesting approach, and and I think you're probably right. That's exactly what we're going to hear. For those of you just joining, we are talking with Bernard Whitman, Democratic strategist, as we take a look at what we can expect from the debate tonight. All right, Bernard, now it gets really tough. Now I want you to be Donald Trump's campaign manager. What are I'm not saying what he's going to do. What are you telling him to do? Well, you know, there's two schools of thought there. Uh, there's the uh, the people who recognize that what we need to do, if I'm Donald Trump, is is try to win back a small portion of uh, of the suburbs, particularly suburban women, particularly white suburban women. Uh, and you know, if if he's going to do that, I'd say 
You've got to take some responsibility for what's happening in the country. You have to sort of say, we need to step it up. We need to wear masks. We're going to uh, we're going to have a coronavirus relief bill when I'm president and we, we keep the Senate. We're going to actually be able to, to, to pass a stimulus bill that's not going to break the bank. It's going to bring people uh, their jobs back. I don't think that. I sort of think that it's a fool's errand because he's not going to stay on message. So if I'm going to sort of say, you know what, I'm Donald Trump's advisors. I want to give some advice that at least the president might take. Try to rattle Joe Biden. Try to get him upset. Try to make him make a gap. Try to get him emotional. If if you can, um, and you know we saw that last time. Trump came out of the gate like a wild dog, trying to go at Joe Biden to try to sort of throw him off his game. Didn't work. This time it's going to be a little bit harder because their mics are going to be muted, but in the back and forth, they're not going to be muted. So I suspect Donald Trump is going to try to get under Joe Biden's skin about Hunter Biden. Uh, I don't think it's going to work. And do you anticipate that Joe will probably follow the same strategy we saw him do very effectively in the first debate, which is to basically not look at Donald Trump, but look into the camera? I mean, after all, this is his opportunity to deliver his closing argument. And what that says to me is two things. One, he's going to be speaking primarily to us. And secondly, they're probably both in in no small measure going to be avoiding the questions and going with their scripts. I, I absolutely think he's going to, and it's going to drive Donald Trump crazy. Why? Because he should ignore Donald Trump, speak directly to the American people. Donald Trump, nothing pisses him off more than when he's ignored, than he's forgotten about, than when he's talked over or talked around, to feel that he's not the center of attention, to feel that it's not about him. The truth is, Joe Biden needs to remind people, this is not about Donald Trump. And as Barack Obama so poignantly and eloquently and powerfully said yesterday in Philadelphia, this is not a reality TV show. It's reality. And Americans are all around the country understand that they are hurting. They're concerned about the coronavirus. Most people think it's going to get worse before it gets better. Benefits have been drying up. He needs to speak to the American people and say, I will deliver relief to you. I will stop this pandemic. I will protect pre-existing conditions. And by the way, in the face of all this, we're still going to work on the environment because don't forget – the environment is becoming more and more of a mess under Donald Trump, and we're going to clean that up as well. And in the very short time we have left, my expectation is that no matter what they talk about tonight, it will be decided on coronavirus. And that, in all likelihood, means that Joe Biden comes out getting more support from the American people than Donald Trump does. Your, your determining uh, issue? I think it's absolutely the coronavirus. It's coronavirus and the economy, which are inextricably linked. And I think the truth is the the only way that Donald Trump wins this election is by stealing it. All right. We got to leave it there, Bernard, because we're just out of time for the segment. Bernard Whitman, Democratic strategist, uh, founder and CEO of Whitman Insight Strategies. Bernard, you will, you'll have to come back after the debate and uh, we'll see how this all turned out. Thanks so much for uh, hanging out with us today. I would love to. Thank you so much, Rick, and enjoy the debate, folks. Enjoy it indeed, and we will continue with...